Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Marathon Mondays with Mal, one of the busiest departments in the building, especially on Monday, the service department. Here we are. What, co what coach number 10? 10? 1054. 10.54 is definitely in the house. My man Todd Pickett is over here getting some service done. And speaking of that, you got to make an appointment, you guys. We've talked about it before. If you are looking, look at all these coaches in here. If you are looking to get into a service department, whether it be down in Florida, Texas, or here at the mothership. We got these rags here, these dusters. Anyway, make an appointment. Uh, my man Todd Pickett did that. Uh, I know Bernie V has probably got an appointment. He's coming in soon. Make an appointment and, uh, yeah, get into the service department. Now, one of the most important things that the service department does, as you guys well know, are these retrofits, but also post-production things that happen on custom coaches or on new coaches are in the bays. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Coach 1358, this is a coach that we saw throughout production and then right before delivery. Congratulations to the new owners of 1358. But really this morning, we're gonna focus on the bays on the curbside of 1358 because they've, they've been outfitted with some really cool things and I wanna show you uh, the functionality of them, and then we're going to go down to the end of service. So stick with us, because uh, as Woody would say, it's brilliant. All right, 1358. Now, let's get into it. Oh, and let me know where you're watching from. If you've got any questions, comments, throw them my way. Um, we got a lot coming up this, uh, this fall and winter, so we got a lot going on. Uh, we got some good consignments in, so if you're looking to get into a coach, uh, check it out. Outfitting bays is not something that we do unless the customer dictates to us what they want. Some people might just want blank bays, bays with nothing in them so they can just put their stuff in. Some people might just want slides. Some people might want barbecues with refrigerators and all kinds of what have you. This customer in post-production has outfitted this their way. Keep in mind, we're almost done with these bays, but I wanted to bring them to you. So we're gonna show you right now, uh, pardon the dust, but this is what we got. In bay one, we're on the, uh, excuse me, curbside. Take a look at the box. I'm gonna pull this out, John. It's a power box. So the customer was very particular about the lip size. And when I mean lip, I mean the dimension between the base of the rollout to the top. This way, and very experienced owner, this way we are ensuring that nothing can slide out or everything can be compartmentalized. And so that's a really good way. If I was outfitting personally, if I was outfitting a bay storage, this is the kind of cabinetry I would love. And this has got that dark Madagascar uh, cabinetry that I really like because it fits well, not just with the coach, but it also runs throughout. And we'll show you that in just a second down in the plumbing bay. But I love how we've done this. Um, it's, a, it's a tall box by design so that nothing can fly out. Very cool. And of course, it all comes out on the slide out. So pardon the dust on this. That's bay one. Now, in bay two, very similar. But keep in mind on the H3 double slide, and pardon the dust over here, on the H3 double slide, you guys know what this is, right? This is your, your TV. This is a 50 inch TV that comes out of the, um, this cabinetry comes out all the way, and then it articulates left and right, or forward and rear. And then also, as you can see up here, it's got the iPad placed right above uh, the TV console. All right. Also on a slide out, it's a little bit narrower because you've got that TV cabinetry, but everything matches. Pardon the dust on this. We are still finishing up the bays of 1358, but I wanted to bring it to you and show it to you. Very cool. So we're gonna get to a question here in just a second, but I'm gonna show you. Just like in bay one, you've got the same dimensions when it comes to the depth. Not only does that 
uh, add to the functionality. As you see, we've got some large bins in here, but it also is consistent between the two bays and it looks proper. Very cool. Now, in some coaches, some people might want a barbecue and a refrigerator in here. Some people might want, you know, something like this or a fishing pole setup. We've seen that recently. But the thing is, we do it custom for the customer when they dictate it. So when this coach was sold, it didn't have anything in the bays. And you guys will remember that from the Marathon Mondays where we showed 1358 completed. And now, boom, you know, it now has some uh, infrastructure to the bays now because that's what the customer wanted. Now, I think we've got a question. Abigail's going to throw it our way as we stand in front of these beautiful bays. Go ahead, Abigail. Go ahead and give us a, a, a question or a comment. Yeah, it pertains to the bays, actually. Sure. Our friend Ron um, says, are the bays temperature controlled automatically or does it have to be outfitted if requested by a customer? Well, the bays are, are not insulated for like extreme cold weather. Uh, so if you are, if you need your bays to be um, cooled, we do have the ability to do that. I want to say a couple of years ago, and some of you may remember this on uh, a coach, we actually outfitted one with a kind of like a office in the bottom of bay one that had air conditioning. So uh, basically, you run ducting that goes down into uh, down into the bays, or it's definitely a custom coach thing. So yes, we we do have the ability to do that. I mean, quite frankly, over 40 years of existence, or almost 40 years, we're coming up on our 40th year. Uh, 2023 will be the 40th year of marathon. So uh, it, there's not much that we haven't done, um, I, and I say that just when you know someone comes up with something really cool. Now, as you see in bay three, it's got a, it's a, this is not a power slide out, this is a manual slide out for a reason. So it's got a slide master in there like we saw last week on that beautiful American coach, that's coach 1366. It's got those really nice uh, slide masters that save space. Why do we have that? We're going to walk down to the end there in just a second. And I'm going to show you what's going to go here in Bay 3 on the driver's side of 58. Beautiful setup, and it's being built as we speak. So that's why this has a slide master, which, as you can see, is a more low profile. It's not got the big infrastructure of a power slide out like Bay 1 and Bay 2 do. Okay, this is Bay 4 on the driver's side. This is really only got the ladder in it. I noticed there's a couple of fishing poles in here. Kurt Nelson, definitely in the house. But take a look at that. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of space. And so for that utilization, we've got the um, little giant in there. Uh, we're going to shut that guy down. Love this paint job. I, I mean, I think you guys can see it, but uh, just a really cool paint job on 1358. Now. I talked earlier down, when we were down there in Bay 1 and Bay 2 about that dark Madagascar. That's what runs throughout, and you can see it right here. It's really a good um, laminate to use throughout the bays because it cleans up well, and it shows well, and it's kind of a neutral dark and gray color. So, But a lot of people see this bay. This is the fifth bay on the curbside. And they think wine cooler because of this tinted glass. This is actually part of the plumbing bay. This is where your filter system is. This is where your pumps are. Take a look at this. This is a coach that was, uh, I think it took delivery a couple months ago. So it's been, it's been in service for a couple of months. Look at the beauty of this bay. Everything has its proper place, engineered properly, and serviceable. That's a big, big thing. Um, being able to service those pumps, being able to service the plumbing is not something to be overlooked. Uh, we were looking at, um, another, another coach that was not a marathon, uh, that was in here for service and a bunch of things had to be removed in order to get to an older, I mean, granted it was a 20 year old coach, 
but they had to remove a bunch of the plumbing just to get to the water heater. Um, but marathons, for the most part, over the years have been, have been engineered and built in a fashion so that things can be serviced, replaced, repaired, things like that. And I think our bays, especially on our new coaches, really illustrate that. And also aesthetically, it's very cool looking. All right. Abigail, you, before we move on to show them what we're going to do over in Bay 3, you want to show another question at us? Yeah, we got some more Bay questions. Bay so I questions, thought I it like would it. be, it would like be a San good Francisco idea. Or, okay, no. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. That made me giggle. Um, so let's see. Chad asks, uh, what's the average cost per bay to add a power slide out? I don't know if that's maybe something you that's have a, an answer to. That's a to. tough question to ask. Chad's asking about, I hope you guys heard that from Abigail and appreciate John and Abigail, uh, on today's show with us. The cost of outfitting these bays. Okay. The cost all depends because it's like in a custom coach, everything is custom. In this one, we did these, these um, a little bit larger, as, and I mean larger, I mean dimensionally a little bit taller, excuse me, for the proper term. So as far as the cost, it all depends on each individual coach. Also, some coaches are different than others. It's like, Quite frankly, I've never seen the refrigerator I'm about to show you guys. It's in Bay 3, so I wouldn't know that cost. The best way, if you are a coach owner and you have, let's say, you've got a 20-year-old marathon or you've got a brand-new marathon and you're looking to outfit your coach, definitely something to get with, uh, as Kurt Nelson just walked by, definitely something to get with our service department on because every coach uh, is unique. So we can walk to next bay while I ask this question. If yeah, you like, let's yeah, go this way, John. Um, so let me go ahead and pull it right up here. Busy, do, busy do, 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 Monday. Do. Uh, Joe asks, greetings from Texas and the great Southwest. Are you able to equip a bay to house a golf car or motorcycle? I don't know why I said cart like that. Uh, a, a golf cart. Or a motorcycle. Yeah, absolutely. So we've done both. Um, we have outfitted, and big thanks to Joe down in uh, the large state of Texas. This is a nice coach, too. Um, yes, we have done uh, golf carts. We have done motorcycles. Um, I think you guys may remember, uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't catch it on Extreme RVs, you were going to catch it uh, here when it was uh, a pre-owned, but we did a custom coach uh, Oh, about seven, eight years ago that was on Extreme RVs, and that had a golf cart in it. So it is definitely doable. One of the most important things about these bays, and you'll see all kinds of crazy stuff out there, you guys, where people put ridiculous cars and stuff in the bays. That's not a Prevo chassis. That's not a bus. Number one thing about the Prevo chassis is the safety, the comfort, uh, and the longevity of the chassis. And uh, altering the chassis to put a... a a little car in the bottom is not what Marathon's going to do. Marathon's going to retain um, the structural the, the structural integrity of the Prevo chassis and still build you what you want in there. And there are some things we can we just have to say no about. Uh, you know, I can't put a Winnebago in the bottom of a Prevo. That's a that's a great point. Um, and I think this is a great question right now because now we're next to an X. Uh, yeah. Robin asks. Uh, what is the difference between, and I know you've answered this before, an X3 to H3 bays? Yeah, X, uh, it's a good question since we're talking about bays. This is the second week in a row we've talked about bays. But um, it's one of the more important things of being a coach owner is storage. People love storage. I love storage. You should see my garage. Anyway, the difference between an X and an H when it comes to the bays, okay? The bay storage in an H, like we were just looking at, is taller, or dimensionally, it's higher, for the lack of a better term. In an X, nice. In, in a X, the, now I'm not gonna open this one because this is not my coach, this is someone's coach, but in an X, the storage is a little bit wider, but a little bit narrower or, or shorter. So you, can, you saw that last week, 
uh, one of the best ways I can illustrate that is referring you to last week's show where we looked at um, 1362 and 1366. I got those numbers right, all right. Uh, we looked at an H, which is 62, and we looked at an X3, which is 66. And I showed you guys last week kind of the difference in those bays. Um, so keep in mind in the X3, the ceiling is higher and your cockpit is on the same level as your living quarters. In the H, you make an additional couple small steps up into your, into your home. And uh, for most people's thoughts, the cockpit is a little bit lower, but the ceiling is lower too. So that's the, that's the trade-off of the H versus the X. Okay, so as I was showing you down on 58, we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you what they're gonna put in that bay three, because it's pretty exciting. All right, take a look at this. This is the cabinetry, <clears throat> pardon the dust here, uh, as I wipe off that Madagascar. This is the cabinetry or the infrastructure that's gonna go around that refrigerator. Take a look at this refrigerator, you guys. I've never seen this model. This is a Fisher Paykel integrated, it's called a cool drawer, okay? Some of you may have seen this. I love the idea of this because it's got a lot of room, but it doesn't take a lot of room from top to bottom. Now in the cabinetry, this will not be exposed down here, okay? I was talking with um, the heavenly hands of Rob Angelo earlier about this, but he was basically illustrating that what's gonna be exposed when this gets done, and hopefully we can do maybe a quick mal on the move to show you the finished product of this before the customer picks up 1358. But this dish, it, it looks like a dish drawer, right? This Fisher Paykel cool drawer, only this is gonna be exposed to the outside because this is all that opens up. This is all that you see. So this will be covered, and this will be covered by this Madagascar uh, dark laminate. So it's really gonna look nice, and it's just another example of the service department in Coburg here at the mothership, they do the best job on marathons. If you have a marathon and you're looking to either remodel it or you're looking to outfit it, there is no place better to go than right here in this building. All the coaches are built here, so why wouldn't you outfit the bays or retrofit it right here? Anyway, take a look at the inside of this. Only just an additional freezer portion. Freezer. This is the refrigerator, and it's all in this really cool situation, and it's made by Fisher Paykel, which is the same as the refrigerators in the H3s and the dish drawers, the dishwashers in the H3s. So a really good brand. I think they're, uh, I'm not sure if they're out of Sweden. I might have just, that's our, that might be something else. Anyway, um, very cool to see how this is set up prior to it being done. This is gonna fit in there and the whole thing is gonna go on the slide out and that's gonna happen the next few days. So that's cool. And as we stand here, I'm looking at the infrastructure of a, this is 1153's new sofa. And it looks like they've got it down here just to fit it in to make sure that it fits. Any other comments or questions uh, there, Abigail? Yeah, uh, I'll start, or start or, uh, I cannot speak. This is such a great morning. Happy Monday, everyone. <laughs> um, so Joe asks, uh, given the difference of the X versus H bays, what is the difference in square feet? That's a very technical question. I don't it know is. if you have the answer to. It is. And it's, it's not necessarily a question that can be answered, except for saying these coaches are very custom. So it depends on each coach, what you have in it. So, you know, just throwing a square footage number out there, is impossible. And even if I knew that number, most likely Mal wouldn't remember it. I'll have to check with Mal later, but Mal wouldn't remember those numbers. I, I do have to uh, share this one because I think you're going to oh, get a yeah. kick out of it. Sure. Um, Eric Andrew <laughs> says, good morning, Mal. Who sang the original song sitting on the dock of the bay? Bay question, he says. It's a bay question. So it is a bay question. And um, I think he passed away right after writing the song. I can't think of his name. Wes? Jim Torrance did answer. You don't know that, you don't know that answer? You can't phone a friend? 
Yeah, let's phone a friend. Jay <laughs> well, Teasy. Well, yeah, Jim says uh, Otis Redding. Otis Redding. And I think Otis Redding passed away right after writing that song. Little tribute to him. Yeah, and stop me if I'm wrong, you guys. Someone look that up before we wrap this show up. I think he passed away right after writing or performing that song for the first time. There's something I remember about Otis Redding passing away after Dock of the Bay was either written or performed or recorded. Not quite sure. Anyway, let's move along. Good reference to the Bays. You guys know I like my music reference. I was blanking on Otis Redding there, so... Um, it was a Bay question. I didn't say Otis Day in the Nights. That would be a Eugene reference for those of you who like to hang at the Dexter Lake Club. So we're going to head right back down to 1358 and uh, show you one more time right here, John. Show you one more time where that uh, Fisher Paykel refrigerator cool drawer is going to go. The cool drawer, adding another... Um, Really cool thing that we could put in these bays. That's where that's going to go. Bay one, two, three. Really cool on 1358. I'm so glad we got the chance to, um, to hang out with 1358 one more time before it hits the road again. Because outfitting these bays um, is very, very personal. And you'll see uh, 1054's bays. Uh, Todd Pickett here, uh, one of our marathon owners. He is very meticulous about where everything goes on his coach and how everything is set up. And so uh, getting everything in the bays is definitely something that is very personal to the owners. So uh, it's something you and it's and it's unique to every coach because every owner sets it up their own way. Experienced RVers are experienced at where things need to go. I actually have a question myself just because I think this might be good for yeah, people go to know. Um, is there a particular place where certain things need to be put in the bays? Like, let's say someone does want a refrigerator. Does it have to go in a certain bay? Abigail's Can it not be next to other question. bays? You know, Man, that's such a good question. And I'm going to tell you why that's a good question. Because, And it's not a question that I can necessarily answer in the proper fashion. But I know that that is absolutely correct. So, like, where should a barbecue go? All right, let's take a look at this. We're gonna get into it. Since there, the rules are there are no rules, and we learned that from Fraggle Rock. The thing is, when you're looking at bay one or bay two, and you've got windows up here, and where the windows open, I'm gonna shut these down, John, so we can see the whole paint job. I'm gonna make sure all those slide outs are in. So let's say that window is open, and you've got a barbecue, you gotta think, Barbecue smells and what have you are going to go right through that window. Some people prefer it, the barbecue to be here. Some people, the barbecue to be here. Some people, and I've seen this, prefer a barbecue that is uh, like magnet, magnet topped so that it can be moved depending on where they go. So whether they're cooking here or they're cook they want to move it to a table, they could even move it inside their coach. So there's things like that. Abigail's asking a very good question on where things should go, or are there anything that has to go in a certain bay? So um, as far as like the infrastructure of what is already built into the bay, each bay is already set up with outlets and you know some bays have um, different things that might have to be moved around, but Marathon Service Department, they can, uh, basically consult on where things should go or should not go. Uh, and also, size-wise, there are items like that uh, fisher Paykel cool drawer that we saw. This is like the perfect bay for that. And, you know, big ups to the owner of 1358 for realizing, okay, I've got a short bay because the generator's on the other side here or whatever's on the other side of 1358 here. I believe it's the generator. He's got a shorter bay, and I mean the depth of this is not that deep compared to bay one and bay two. So what can I get in here? Can I put golf bags in here? Can I, well, it's kind of short, but finding that fisher Paykel cool drawer and fitting it with that little slide out, it's just really cool. And the fact that Marathon has the ability to customize it 
it's really cool. Any other thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, thank you for answering my question. Yeah. Um, Joe asks, uh, well, more says, uh, yeah. just letting you know that you're correct. He says Redding died three days after sitting on the dock of the bay. So you were correct. Yeah, I've remembered. I, I didn't want to say it was three days if it was right, but I remember it was, I remember reading, I think it was like in the liner notes of a, of a CD and Otis mm -hmm. Redding greatest hits ba that I had back in the day. Um, that Otis Day, Otis Day, Otis Redding <laughs> died three days yes. after writing that. Isn't that Very amazing? Very good memory. Very good memory. You do great on Jeopardy. Isn't that amazing? Um, another question, though. Three days. Robin asks, and actually a couple of people have requested uh, seeing how 1366 is coming along. I don't know if we're saving that. Um, I'll tell you exactly because I checked on it this morning. Great. Thir 1366 is in um, kind of what we call work off when it comes to audit. 1366 is something that we're going to bring you uh, a full video because there's so many people that are interested in it. And it's such a custom marathon interior and exterior. I mean, I think you guys know that at this point. Um, a good question and big thank you to Robin for that question. But uh, 1366 is in work off. What that means is we audit the coach, take it on long drives and make sure that everything is good. Senior staff does a walkthrough, looks through, make sure it's up to marathon specs, make sure it's up to marathon quality. And then there's a certain amount of work off. That work off involves every single department plumbing, electrical, uh, programming, upholstery, um, every single department, laminate, cabinetry, they all come in and they say, okay, now that wasn't right. I saw something here. I got a question about this. Can we fix this? You know, the tufting on this upholstery isn't right. John, can you fix that? Things like that. So during the work off, which depending on how many things were found, it could take a couple of days. It could take a week. So uh, delivery on 1366 is coming and so is a video. So very cool. Yeah. All right. Let's walk this way, you guys. Any other thoughts, Abigail, before we boogie boogie on down the road? I mean, I'm not seeing a lot. Um, I I mean, this is kind of funny. Your mother often watches. Yes. And, Good morning, uh, Mom. She said, how about Linda Ronstad Blue Bayou or Blue, Bayou? Blue Bayou. Yes. You know that song. I probably do. It's, I just she, can't think of it at put, the moment. She's doing a good uh, play on words with Bayou. She is. She yeah. uh, she even um, made it very clear how to how to say it. Made yeah. Bay all caps. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone, Todd Pickett knows this. If anyone's going to do good on Jeopardy, it's my mom. Damn. My my mom knows her je knows her uh, trivia knows her knows her film noir, if you will. <laughs> Okay, that's about it for the day. We did show your bays because we, we know that bays are very personal. And, we, and, and you're very personal as a, as a marathon owner. You're very personal about your bays. Every owner has their own setup that works for them. Oh, well, talking to Todd Pickett. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the owner of Coach 1054. A lot of you guys probably know Todd from the desert but uh, or Montana. But... Uh, bottom line is, um, we were talking about bays today, Todd, and one of, you know, one of the one of the things that are so personal to the owners of these marathons are the bay setups. So, getting it set up right is so important. So, I'm going to get out of here for the day. Big thanks to all of you uh, for watching and commenting. Big thanks to my mom for watching. Recess is over, so it's time to get to work. Be yourself and do good things. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good week. If you're looking to get into a marathon, MALW, M-A-L-W at MarathonCoach.com. That's how you can get a hold of me. My paramount job is not to stand in front of the camera. I do love doing it, but my number one job is to sell you a coach or to help you get into the right marathon for you. Reach out to me and let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, you guys, take care of yourself. And if I didn't say it, but I'm sure that I did, be yourself and do good things. I'm out. Be good.